Welcome to the instructional design team. My name is Anna Moyes. I'm the lead instructional designer. Over the next five minutes, we'll learn more about the roles of subject matter expert, also known as me, and instructional designer, also known as ID. Today, we'll review communication and collaboration best practices and discuss troubleshooting techniques. Let's dive right in and discuss ID and SME roles. The ID team leads the learning development process. They are responsible for project management responsibilities, such as performing needs analysis, creating project plans, setting deadlines and milestones, and scheduling meetings and check-ins. The ID team upholds learning standards and troubleshoots challenges. They also write and source materials. SMEs are busy people. They vet and review the content. They're often stakeholders as well, They're closely involved in finalizing content and ensuring business needs are met. Now that we have established the differences between SME and ID roles, can you think of things both SME and ID need to do? That's right, the ID and SME must work on supporting, respecting, and communicating well throughout the process. But how can we do that? First, develop trust. People feel safer in an environment where they feel like they belong. The SME may feel unfamiliar with the instructional design world. Build trust by being respectful, kind, and answering SME questions with patience. Then, find common ground. Both are interested in creating a great learning module. You share a vision. What else do you share? Chat regularly with SMEs to find common ground that goes beyond the project. Be reliable, be on time, communicate goals, and provide timely updates. Finally, recognize your SME's efforts and appreciate them often. Tell your SME precisely how they supported the project. Maybe they suggested an engaging interactive module, found an interesting video, or write concise emails. What is important is that this compliment is genuine, timely, and specific. Be a good communicator. Active listening is crucial. Listen to understand, not to respond. For example, suppose a SME comes to you with an issue. Pay close attention to what the SME is describing and ask follow-up questions. Be engaged. Summarize the SME's concerns. You could say, So, what you're saying is that this quiz doesn't cover company policies accurately. What would you suggest? And while we're talking about talking, please remember to never interrupt. Problems may arise and you may need to provide feedback. Make sure to be direct, concise, and tactful. Provide constructive feedback and highlight positive things about their work. Avoid using the word but when possible. For example, instead of saying, I like the interactive activity, but the text is too boring, you may rephrase it as, I like the interactive activity and the text could use some reviewing to make it more concise and engaging. We want the SME to feel safe and valued. Recognize their efforts in every opportunity you get. It is best to find out early if there are any issues. Keep an open communication channel. Host frequent check-ins to foster collaboration and transparency. If the SME feels stuck, offer support. If they think they don't belong, involve them in the process and decision-making. If a SME is quiet in meetings, find the best way to get their input. Maybe they feel shy and prefer emails or smaller gatherings. Finally, make sure to create a culture of accountability by placing healthy boundaries and modeling transparency. Provide updates. Let the SME know what you have been working on. Today we have learned about building an excellent collaborative relationship with SMEs. Welcome to the team. Now let's put all that knowledge to practice.